We're so glad that you joined us today, and uh, we want to worship the Lord with all of our heart. And uh, one song we're going to begin to sing this morning is, You Are Worthy of My Praise. So He is worthy of all of our praise. So join us to this morning as we sing. Worship Him. Jesus, Jesus. 
compassion, love that's never failing, let mercy fall on me, everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations, Say For you 
are mighty to save. You are mighty to save. Hey, we are so glad you have joined us today for worship and pray that you are inspired and encouraged and challenged uh, as we worship the Lord collectively uh, together. And uh, each week we like to remind you as we move into the message time uh, that if you have a prayer request, would like to take a spiritual step, maybe have a need or like to join our email list, that we, an email we send out every week, you can either email me at the address there or text the word respond to the number and uh, we will respond as quickly as we can. Um, you know, next Sunday we're going to resume Next weekend, resume the, the series we're on called Exodus, A Journey to Freedom, and talk about how God would love to lead you and me, all of us, on a journey of exodus from where we are to where He would love us to be in life. But today, we're all in for a treat. A friend of mine, Pastor Lon Harden from down in Guyton, Georgia, is going to come up and, and speak and preach to us. A very gifted communicator, knows his church, loves his people, has a big heart for God, his family, and uh, so excited to hear what he's going to share. And so you can see Lon's from Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church down in Guyton, Georgia. And now you're going to be challenged, and I will be as well. Now, each week, I like to remind you that if you give through this local church, this local ministry, that the money you give is not just to a balance sheet or an income statement uh, to a bottom line, but the money given through this church, this ministry, actually goes to impact the lives of of people. And an example of that is called the Adoption Fund. It is a fund that financially assists pastors, missionaries, and employees of the Southern Baptist Convention, the different organizations that are part of it, in adopting kids. You might wonder why. Well, it's right there to ignite a culture of adoption, uh, not only in our churches, but churches all across our country. So if you give money through this local church, this local ministry, some of that actually goes to a fund to help uh, pastors and missionaries and leaders uh, within our denomination to adopt kids to help create that as a, just a, a passion within the churches in our country. And so just a little highlight of it, God's called some people to foster parents. Maybe that describes some of you. God's called others to adopt uh, kids. Maybe that describes you. But as it says there, we're all called to support these people. And again, if you give money through this local church, some of that actually goes to support people pursuing adoption. So that being said, we like to remind you of the different ways you can give, the many ways uh, online and uh, through your bank and all the options that are there. And again, when you give, we want our every dollar to go to impact the lives of people. Let's pray. Father, we're excited to hear Pastor Lon come and share with us today. Thank you for the friendship I enjoy with him. And uh, Father, for the way he's blessed me so many different ways in that relationship. Lord, we pray uh, today we'll be receptive to what he shares and uh, know it comes from you. And Father, we're thankful for the way that our church is continually leveraging money and resources to impact the lives of people. And one, day, one way is through this adoption fund. And we're thankful that little kids uh, who have no home can have home and parents where they can enjoy and grow up. And Father, all by our investment uh, through this local church. We bless you. And we love you. Thank you again for blessing us with this day. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Good day, everyone. My name is Reverend Lon M. Harden. I am pastor of the Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church in Guyton, Georgia. It's an honor and a privilege to come today and to share a word with you with the Rankin First Baptist family. And we ask that those of you that may have your Bibles with you to have them ready, amen, as we go into a word of prayer before we give the word on today. Let us pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for all things. God, you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Thank you from early existence this morning and got us up with a reasonable portion of health and strength. Father, we thank you for protecting us all day long and thank you bringing us to this appointed place at this appointed time. Now, Father, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are my strength as well as my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you go along with us today, our word of the Lord will be coming from Acts chapter three, Acts chapter three, verses one through six. Amen. And I'm reading from the open Bible, King James Version, the open Bible. Chapter three of Acts verses one through six reads as follows. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple of the hour of prayer the ninth hour and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Third verse says who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask for alms and fixing his eyes on him with John. Peter said, look, at us. Fifth verse says, so he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Sixth verse says, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. That concludes our scripture reading for this passage scripture today and the sermon title. Amen. If you would allow me to expound on the title, get on up, get on up. Many may look at that title, get on up. And the first thing comes to mind is James Brown, which had a very hit record. Amen. That said, get on up, get on the scene and the other lyrics of the subject. But this here is a get on up because of God's grace and his mercy and the healing and the miraculous thing that took place with Peter and John and the man laying at the gate. Hopefully at the conclusion of this word on today that you would have a greater amen ability to get on up out of whatever it is that you're in or you're facing or your situation that you want to get on up and do the will of the father. There also are additional verses along with this. Amen. But we will get to that. Amen. Later on in our message. As we look at this, this Peter and John is the day of Pentecost had just happened. And Peter continuously tells us of God's promise. Amen. That he will show wonders in heavens above and the signs on earth below. We know in the scriptures that Peter did many things. He healed sick. Amen. He's also even raised. Amen. Only person raised the dead was Jesus Christ. But Peter walked on the water as well. And Peter was a very anointed man by Jesus Christ. And there were many people that called on Peter when they needed a healing or they needed something to get through. So Peter is very intricate and John as well. Amen. They were part of Jesus inner circle. Amen. I don't know about you. Don't you want to be on the inner circle with Jesus Christ. Amen. As he said here, the miracle is done in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peter and John, again, these two brothers are on their way to the temple of the daily celebration, the daily worship, the daily praise. And there they find this particular man there sitting at the gate. If this man cannot walk, that means that someone has brought him and laid him at the gate. But let's look at the story in detail so we can get the just of the get on up. First verse is that they went up together. Peter and John, they were together. Amen. Jesus and his disciples two by two. Here they are to the temple of our prayer, the ninth hour and a certain lame man. They didn't give him a name. So when there is no name, place your name that, hey, maybe you're there at a situation, amen, and you're looking for something, you are expecting something, and there's a change about to come. As it says, a certain man, he was lame from his mother's womb. That means that he was born this way. This wasn't an accident on the job or something that took place out of a sickness, but this man was born this way. But how many of you know, just because you were born with something doesn't mean that you have to die with something. 
it says, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate. Now, if you look at this scripture, you say, why would they take this lame man at the gate and leave him there and not take him in? It kind of concerns me in my finite mind that if you brought me this close, why not take me in? But here's the conclusion of the whole matter. As we look at this scripture, you'll see how he got in. Amen. God's intention was never him to be toted in, but him to walk in. Watch this. It says here, the gate of the temple was called beautiful to ask alms from those who entered the temple. So he was a beggar. Amen. Alms. He was asking them because, of course, in this entrance that you would go in, you would have to give something of alms, whether it be money or any different things that you give into the temple. But here this man here is looking to get something from these two disciples. Third verse say, who seeing Peter and John, seeing them about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Again, he was asking everybody. And of course, Peter and John would be no different. Amen. And fixing his eyes on them, fixing your eyes, fixing the eyes mean that a gaze, a strong gaze. Amen. We know that many times in our lives that we've looked at things. Amen. We may have glanced at things, but he said that he's fixing his eyes. That's almost like a daydream. Have you ever seen anyone daydreaming and they're just, and you have to snap your fingers. So therefore they can snap out of whatever they're in. But this brother here, again, fixing his eyes on them with John, Peter said, and Peter always was a spokesman. He was a, sometimes an outspoken spokesman, but nevertheless, he's a spokesman, which means that when you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, you can't keep quiet. Amen. That's what's in you will have to come out because of the righteousness and the glory of God that's been placed upon these brothers. Amen. That he has to speak up. Amen. Even if it gets you in trouble. Amen. He says, look at us. Look at us means to look at them. OK, so he gave them his attention, expected to receive something from them. The sixth verse said, then Peter said, silver and gold. I do not have silver and gold. I do not have means that I don't have any coins. I'm I'm broke. I don't have any money. I don't have any arms to give you. OK, uh, uh, but still yet he offered him something that's more valuable than silver and gold. Let us take a look at this. He says, uh, what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Let's look at this in the name of Jesus Christ. Oftentimes we read in our scriptures that there's power in his name. We've heard it emphasized there's power in the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the sound of his name. Uh, that means that, that, that there is so much power in the name of Jesus that when we pray, we ought to pray in the name of Jesus. Why? Because there's power in the name of Jesus. You can't pray under your name. You can't pray under someone else's name. You got to pray under the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is Preordained, predestined, amen, as the savior of the world, the one who can heal, the one who can defend, the one who can destroy, the one who can raise the dead, give sight to the blind, make the dumb man talk and the lame man walk. He is predestined. He is our savior. He is our redeemer. There's power in the name of Jesus. And all we have to do is just call on the name of Jesus. Amen. As we look here again, there's this brother looking for something to be given, but he says, look at us. But what I do have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Hmm. Seem like something, you know, you, sometimes we ask for things and we don't get what we ask for. But if we're just patient just for a little while, we will get greater than that. We will get something more valuable than that which we're asking. But sometimes in our daily lives, in our finite mind and situations of our lack of patience is that we want it right now and right away. We live in a microwave society. We want it right now. Is it even different from Burger King? Have it your way. No, I not only want it my way, but I want it yesterday. But here is something that takes time. And if you watch how the process takes place, 
Okay, seventh verse, as we move on in the scripture says, and he took him by the right hand, particularly the right hand and lifted him up. Here's a man been lame since his mother's womb. In the translation of the scripture said this man was above 40 years of age. So said, no doubt this was not a lightweight man. Not saying that he was heavy either, but that he was not an infant. So he took him by the right hand. He never picked him up. He took him by the right hand. Look at this and, and, and lifted him up and immediately the Bible. Bible records immediately. Isn't it good when things happen immediately? Jesus can do just things like that in our lives that you can be healed immediately. And then there's times when it's not immediate that it's by and by or in due time. Everything that happens is in due time. The songwriter says he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. This is a perfect example. Okay. He immediately, his feet and ankle bones receive strength. Oh my. Wow. From his mother's birth, from his birth, amen, that his feet were not operational. But now since he touched him by the right hand, lifted him up, his feet and ankle bones, okay, receive strength. Oh my, sometimes all we need is strength. I come to tell you today that the strength is in Jesus Christ. So all you got to do is get on up and test the strength, amen, that he places on the inside of you. It says here, so he leaping up stood. He stood up now. Now he's standing and walked and entered the temple with them. Oh, what a miraculous situation that took place here. Lame at the gate could not get in. No one would take him in. But here is Peter and John on their way into the temple. Don't have any money. Touched him by his right hand and said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And this man received strength and this motivation in his bodies. Something took place. A miraculous situation took place. A miracle took place. Amen. And today, amen, Jesus can touch you right where you are, whether it be by your hand or he may just take you by the rings of your mind. He can touch you and you can get on up out of whatever situation you're in. Regardless, this man actually was paralyzed. Some of us have paralysis, paralysis, amen, in our relationships, paralysis on our job, amen, with each individual's paralysis with people in our community. This paralysis period for his relationships and not have to be physical. It could be mental it means I'm stuck the way that I think. I, I'm stuck the way that I see things. I'm stuck the way that I believe things. But this is a prime example. When Jesus Christ moves in and on and through your life, things will never be the same. You will have to get on up out of that way that you were thinking. You're going to have to get up out of that way that you were acting. Get on up out of that way that that you were just talking and acting and conducting yourself, no matter how long it's been. As I first said in the translation, this man was above 40 years of age. There's some people been the same way for 40 years plus, but now they can become a change. But you're going to have to want to get on up. If you're asking for something on today, come with a spirit of expectancy. Jesus can change whatever it is that you need changing. And yes, we ask for things. We ask for things uh, because according to our limited mind, but he is a limitless God. There is no problem too hard for God. There's no problem that he can't solve. There's no situation that he cannot bring us through because he is God almighty. And his son, Jesus Christ, rose on the third day with all power in his hand. So we depend on him. We call on him. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, if anything you ask in my name. Amen. Anything you ask in my name. Amen. But you must ask with an earnest heart, a pure heart and a sincere prayer. Amen. To our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And oh, what a difference it would make. I ask you today, my brothers and sisters, here it is. A change has come for this dear brother. And I said before that there is no name for him in the Bible, but place your name there. Maybe you're at the, the break of something. You're at the door of something. There's something you want. You want that promotion. OK, you want a man. You want that husband. You want that wife. Uh, you just want that breakthrough. Whatever it is that you desire. Get on up. Praise God. Worship God. 
Thank him. But most importantly, before we be able to do any of that, you must accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and thou shall be saved. And being saved does not mean that you would not be tempted. It would not mean that you would not go through circumstances or situations. What it does mean is that you have an opportunity to call on the name of Jesus over and over and over again. What an honor and a privilege that we can go to him continuously over and over again. Yes, we prayed to him on yesterday. We prayed to him that, Lord, have mercy upon me. I thank you for last night's line down. You woke me up this morning. You gave me the activity of my limbs. But on today, Lord, we face trials and we face temptations. And I ask God that you cover me, keep me, God. And, and Lord, I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And there's power in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the shedding of his blood. I don't know about you. No one else will shed blood for you. Amen. As Jesus Christ did. He shed the ultimate price for all of our sins on Calvary's cross. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful today that I can get on up because what Jesus did, because they may have lifted him up, but today we can get on up simply because we know who Jesus is. We know why he died. We know that he rose. We know that he's in heaven and he's on his way back. So I don't know about you. Get on up because the time is coming. They said when he comes back, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't know about you that I'm waiting for his return, but we're going to have to get on up and trust him and never doubt him. And he will surely bring us out. One more verse I'd just like to carry here. And it says here, as he entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. 11 verse for the last says, now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them on the porch, which was called Solomon's greatly amazed. In this parable, in this story, here's this man laid daily by the gate. You have to look at it sometimes and said, why did they lay him at the gate? God had a special plan. Sometimes it seems that if you do something persistent and it seems that there's no results. What will we do when there's no results? Keep on keeping on. Be persistent in our prayers. Be persistent in our daily worship. Be persistent in that which we desire. He expected something and he received something. I'm asking you today to have a spirit of expectancy. When you get up in the morning, you have a spirit of expectancy that you're going to have a good day. Even if trouble comes your way or trials, you're still going to have a good day because, hey, in the name of Jesus, you can speak a word, amen, and there'll be calmness on that rough sea of situations. We got to ask the name of Jesus. We got to call on the name of Jesus. It's imperative to us to call on the name of Jesus, just as Peter and John did. Amen. The ones of the inner circle. Amen. They are powerful together. Amen. One declared in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk as the other one as a witness. How many, many pastors may say, can I get a witness? Amen. John was a witness there with his dear brother, Peter. Amen. But them together, working together, can do it with the Holy Spirit makes a difference in all things. Today, again, I encourage you that just as this man at the gate of at the gate of the beautiful gate, amen, he asked him to give him something, but yet he received something even greater. How many of you have asked and received something greater than what you asked for? I'm grateful on today that Amen. When you ask for salvation, which it is free, and you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, that are called out according to his purpose. And then after the man went inside the temple, there he is with Peter and John continuously. And the people 
the people, the people that were there and seen him, the ones that marched by him previously before Peter and John. You see, there's always going to be people that's going to go past you in your stage of uh, have nots where you have not been blessed yet. You have not been transformed. You have not been uh, transcended into what God would have you to fully be. And there they can see the results of the miracle that took place. There will be an amazement. There's some people right now amazed that you have made it thus far. How did you make it? You made it by the glory of God, by the power of God. And that's what it's going to be. Whenever you come through, amen, and you are healed and you are lifted up by the name of Jesus, they're going to be a miraculous results that people are going to be amazed because they didn't believe that you would either come out, that you would, amen, be delivered from being an alcoholic, being delivered from being, amen, a prostitute, being delivered from just being a cantankerous person with a lack of understanding. But now you're able to come in reason together with the brothers and sisters. And now you're in the house of God with your new faith, a new belief that you know who Jesus is. Get on up. Get on up, get on up today and praise God. Get on up today and worship God. Get on up today and just thank God for everything he's brought you through. Thank God for the things that he kept you from. Thank God for blessing your family. Thank God for blessing your friend. Thank God for him making provisions, making ways out of no, and thank God for him sending someone your way. This man, I know he can thank God for who was sent his way even though it seemed like they were going to the temple to do their daily routine, but actually God predestined things that he will send someone your way that you will receive the blessing that you stand in the need of. They receive their blessing. And that's the good news. Won't you receive your blessing today by getting on up? Amen. Strangers. Sometimes it's strangers. It's not always the people that we know. So let us be careful. Those people that we may shun away and, not want to ask or, or have any dialogue with, your blessing, your breakthrough may be within your grasp. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for all things. We pray, God, that we will understand it better by and by, that, Lord, we ask today that we're able to get on up in all situations, that we can be delivered, we can be set free, that we can be more than we can be right now, God, because of the name of Jesus, that we will rise up in the name of Jesus, that we will praise God in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that we will magnify you in the name of Jesus, that all things will work together for the good of them that love the Lord, that are called according to that purpose. And God, we give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for you have been good. Your mercy endure forever and your truth endures through all generations. In Jesus' precious and his mighty name, amen. Remember, to get on up, you can't get nothing done sitting down. Jesus is waiting for you to get on up.